In this series, we're going to look at mathematics of PAS and mapping using Python. So here, I use this document as a reference to look at some uh, theory in mathematics in PAS and try to implement it using Python in the left here. So if you want to go to this document, you can follow this link here, which is uh, from this website. Or just search on Google, the mathematics of EIS. The first thing we're going to look at is coordinate systems. And the first thing in coordinate systems is 2D Cartesian coordinate system, or just about converting coordinate values from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. So we follow this figure, and it is pretty basic in, in, in GIS, and surveying and mapping is if we have this angle phi and we have this distance r, we can calculate the value of x and y. So for example here if we have phi is 40 degree and r here is 10 meter for example. So the formula to calculate x is this. x is actually equal to r multiplied by cosine of phi because it's, it's actually this part of the triangle and y is actually equal to r multiplied by sine of r a sine of phi because y is actually just this part of this triangle so basically we are using um, the trigonometry for uh, a square triangle here so we got uh, phi is 40 degree and because phi is in degree we need to convert it into radians. To convert from degrees to radian, we need to import math. Then we use function radians in math, and then we have a uh, 40 degree in radian. After that, we can calculate x and y using this formula. R multiplied by math, co cosine of phi in radians, and y is R multiplied by mass of uh, multiplied by sine of phi in radians and we had x is 7.6 and y is 6.4 so if we change this to 45 degree that means we have a triangle a round triangle or a um, width to two edges to two uh, identical edges. So if we turn around, we will have uh, x is 7 and y is 7. Okay, so that is the way that we can calculate uh, x and y from r and phi using Python. It's, it's actually very simple and basic. In this series, we're going to look at mathematics of PAS and mapping using Python. So here, I use this document as a reference to look at some uh, theory in mathematics in GIS and try to implement it using Python in the left here. So if you want to go to this document, you can follow this link here, which is uh, from this website, or just search on Google the mathematics of GIS. The first thing we're going to look at is coordinate systems. And the first thing in coordinate systems is 2D Cartesian coordinate system, or just about converting coordinate values from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. So we follow this figure, and it is pretty basic in, in, in GIS, and surveying and mapping is if we have this angle phi and we have this distance r, we can calculate the value of x and y. So for example here if we have 5 is 40 
thickly and R here is 10 meter for example. So the formula to calculate X is this. X is actually equal to R multiplied by cosine of phi because it's, it's actually this part of the triangle and Y is actually equal to R multiplied by sine of R a sine of phi because y is actually just this part of this triangle so basically we are using um, the trigonometry for a, a square triangle here so we got uh, phi is 40 degree and because phi is in degree we need to convert it into radians to convert from degrees to radian we need to import math then we use function radians in math and then we have uh, 40 degree in radian. After that, we can calculate x and y using this formula. R multiplied by mass co cosine of phi in radians. And y is R multiplied by mass of uh, multiplied by sine of phi in radians. And we have x is 7.6 and y is 6.4. So if we change this to 45 degree, that means we have a triangle, a round triangle, or a, um, with two two edges, two two uh, identical edges. So if we turn right, we will have uh, x is seven and y is seven. Okay. So that is the way that we can calculate uh, x and y from r and phi using Python. It's it's actually very simple and basic. So that we calculate x and y Cartesian coordinates from known polar coordinates value which is r and phi so how about now we calculate r and phi based on x and y and this is also very simple so for example here we have x and y which is 3 and 4 so in order to calculate r we just follow this formula so it is uh, it's just the one edge in this triangle and then when we want to calculate the fifth angle here it's actually just follow this formula so we got uh, 10 of fifth is y over x and then we can calculate phi is actually 8 and a ten, a ten of uh, of x uh, a y of x. So if we do that, and uh, in order to do that, we need to import math module again. Then we calculate r uh, using uh, sqrt function in math, and we also can calculate fifth using uh, atan function in math, and we convert from radian back to degree using function degrees in math then we run it and we have the result the distance from 0 to p which is r here is 5 and the angle is 53.13 degree so that's all for simple 2d Cartesian coordinate and the computation between Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates in GIS surveying and mapping using Python. Next, we're going to look at 3D Cartesian coordinate system. So um, here is how we can convert, in, uh, convert between Cartesian coordinates and uh, spherical coordinates. So for example, if we have um, the distance from O to P, which is R here, and the angle phi theta tree value, we can calculate Cartesian coordinate, 3D Cartesian coordinates, which are X, Y, and Z. So in order to do that, uh, we just use the following formulas, where we have x is equal to r multiplied by sine theta and multiplied by cosine of phi so actually the way that we can calculate x is actually the first is that we project op on this plane which is uh, 
our x y plane then we have this distance from o to this point here probably b prime and then the second time if we want to calculate x we just project this distance into our x axis so from if we already have this distance from o to b prime it becomes a um, 2D Cartesian coordinate system. So that's why we can have this x is equal to y sine theta and cosine phi. Similar, if we want to calculate y, we just project p on this plane, x y o x y plane. Then we project this point into o x axis, y axis, and we have this z is equal to r multiplied by sine of theta and multiplied by sine of for the z value is very straightforward we just project p onto z axis and it's just uh, equal to r and cosine of theta that is from polar coordinate 3d polar coordinate to 3d Cartesian coordinate so what if we have the coordinate of p and we want to calculate r and we want to calculate uh, theta and phi it is also uh, similar way we can do is that um, so if we know the coordinate of p which is x y and z then we can calculate r using this formula which is just a square root of sum of square of x and y and z and for this angle phi which is just the a sine of uh, y over square root of uh, x square and y square. A similar, we can calculate phi using this formula. So phi can be can ca can be calculated using this formula or this formula, and then uh, the um, theta as well. Theta can be calculated using z and r, or it can be also calculated using this formula. So that there's, there's a different way to convert from Cartesian coordinates in 3D to polar coordinates in 3D. So that's the theory of how to do it. Now we're going to try to do it in Python. It's also pretty simple. So for example, we have a uh, point which, is, uh, which has a coordinate of uh, x is 2, y is 3, and z is 4. Then we can calculate the uh, r using this formula here, which is uh, square root of x square and y square and z square. Then we can print the result of r. After that, we then calculate. So we then calculate the angle, which is uh, theta. A theta is just calculate based on this formula which is mass uh, degrees of mass of uh, a cos of z over r then we calculate phi which is from this formula uh, is that the z from that formula so phi actually the formula i use here is wrong okay or well, it can be from r tan so it's actually the, the yeah so it's from this formula which is the phi is just uh, y over x. It's a very simple formula. And then we can have the value looks like this. So if x, y, z is 2, 3, 4, then we have r is 5, which is uh, makes sense. Then we have the theta, which is this angle, is 42, and phi here is 56. And that's this. That's the way that we convert Cartesian coordinate to polar coordinate. So similar, if we have polar coordinate, for example, r, phi, and theta, we can use these formulas to calculate x and y and z easily using Python. Next, we're gonna work on exercise 24, which is from the mathematics of GIS by uh, Wolfgang Kens. So, to so this exercise 24 is given the geographic coordinates of uh, Vienna Airport as phi is 48.12, lambda is 
5757 and the radius of the Earth as R and we compute the Cartesian coordinates of the airport when the origin of the Cartesian coordinate system is located at the center of the Earth and the axis direction are illustrated in figure 17 so we can go to figure 17 here so based on this figure, we can see that we have phi, we have lambda, and we have r, which is uh, mp, the distance from m to p here. What we need to do is we need to calculate x, y, z of p, or 3D Cartesian coordinates of p from geographic coordinate phi, lambda, and radius of the earth. So in order to do that, we're going to implement it in Python. So actually, I already did it in Python here. So in order to do that, we're going to use the formula from figure 16 in this document. So uh, if we see the figure, we can see that uh, in this figure, lambda is equivalent to phi and phi is equivalent to theta, uh, actually 90 minus theta. So let's jump into Python and uh, start doing this exercise okay so in order to make it uh, easier for us to follow i have my reference here as i did it already i'm going to make a new cell and then firstly i need to import numpy as np run it after that so i'm going to decide to just copy and cut it here numpy as np so what i'm going to do is um, firstly i'm going to convert so I'm going to have the, that uh, given, the given thing here, which is, um, try to ignore this. So the give, given thing here, which is, um, phi is 48.12 degree. Then we need to convert phi from degree into radians using radian function in NumPy. And it's also because the given is phi but the notation to this formula is actually theta so what we need to do is we need to find theta it's actually a bit confusing we will say that um, theta is in degree is actually 90 minus phi in degree in we run that and we're gonna have theta is 41.88 after that we convert theta into radians from degree using numpy radian function so in order to do that we just make theta with radian and then we put theta inside here and finally we print out theta in radian so now we have theta in radian what else is given we are given lambda which is equivalent to phi in this figure so we gonna get the lambda is equal to lambda degree but we can say that which is a free degree which is 16.57 so we done now two here already so now we can convert phi to radian which is numpy dot radian then put in phi degree here to convert from degree to radians then if we print this out we can have a phi angle in radian then we also are given r as well after that we just follow this formula after we have r we have uh, theta we have phi then we just use this formula to calculate x y and z 3d cartesian coordinates of p so now it's very easy so now x then we say calculate 3d cartesian coordinates of uh, p of the given Point. So now x is actually r multiplied by sine of phi multiplied by cosine of um, cosine of uh, actually sorry sine of theta and multiply cosine of phi. So we got here theta which is actually theta in radian and phi here is actually phi in radian. Okay, but if we run this, we're gonna get an error because Python doesn't understand sine and cosine this way. So we need to call numpy dot sine and also numpy dot cosine. Then we can have x value which is four thousand. This is in kilometer. So actually, we need to convert this into meter as well. So it should be zero 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 here. 
So now we can have the coordinate of this point, which is 4,000, uh, 400,000. Uh, it surely switches 4 million, isn't it? No, no, it's, yeah, it's 4 million. Next, we're gonna do for y. So the same y is actually y and sine of. So if we look at this formula, sine of theta, then multiply by cosine of phi. Yeah, and similar we know that theta should be radian and phi should be radian. And also sine should be from numpy or from math is okay. Uh, and yeah, if I put in import math here, I can also use math dot cosine. It's the same function. Then I have uh, so we got that. This is y. Uh, actually, this is actually sine sine here. So I got x and y now. To so go like that, we have x and y. Next, we also need to calculate that. So this is actually using this formula. Pretty short. That uh, z is equal to r cosine of theta. So that is r cosine of theta. And of course, theta need to be radian and cosine need to be from numpy or math. Then now uh, we get x and y and z. So that's it. If we have the input is uh, this angle, this angle and radius of the earth, we can calculate the Cartesian coordinates of a point on the earth. So this is actually not um, not the real coordinate system that we use in the real world in GIS and surveying, but it's a good step to as uh, a fundamental concept to understand how to convert from geographic coordinate to 3D Cartesian coordinate. And from there, we can go a step further to understand how to convert from geodetic coordinate to projected UTM or projected coordinate, such as the yeah, UTM uh, projected coordinate. So again, I use the reference of uh, the video. The reference for this video is this book uh, online. You can access it really from this homepage. So and also. Please uh, keep your comments and uh, suggestions down below uh, for a better way to calculate this. And uh, we will come back with uh, other video relating to this theory about uh, math in GIS. Next, we're going to look at uh, vectors and matrices. So, um, in here, we can read about what is vectors and matrices and how important it is in uh, treatment of geographic or geometric figures. Firstly, vector. So what is a vector? So if we look at this figure, we can see that uh, if a um, so if we had a point P, this point have three coordinates values which is x, y, and z. This also can be represented as a vector p here. So in other words, every single point p in uh, 3D coordinates can be represented as a point vector like that. So if we have two point vector, we can do some calculation. For example, we can add two vectors together like this. So we have vector A is a x, a y and a z. Vector B is the x, b, y and b, z. Then we can have vector A plus B is just at the equivalent corresponding elements of these vectors together. So we, we implement it in Python and see how it works. So in order to <coughs> deal with a vector, we need to import numpy as np here, okay? Then we define vector u, for example vector u, or we can say it's a vector a, is numpy array. So I'm going to tie this again here to make it uh, easy to understand. a is going to be numpy dot array. Let me put a uh, parenthesis here or round bracket here and inside here if we want to make a vector we need to put it uh, it's depend on if it's a row vector or it is a column vector so 
for example is a row as a column vector we can define it by this yeah that, that column vector so we can put the uh, um, first element in second element in and the third element in that way similar we can have second vector which is b and we add the value in that way okay then if we want to plus them together we just do that and we get the vector phi uh, with the values in the new vector is uh, 5, uh, 7, and 9, which is exactly as the example in the book here. What if, I didn't try this, but what if we had a vector u is numpy dot array, then we do uh, 1, 2, 3, which is a row vector, and we see that. Then we have v is numpy dot array, then we put in 4, 5, 6, then we plus them together, and we also have a row vector and they just add the element in together so that's it for or maybe we can do something more we can do uh, so if we want to multiply a vector with uh, a value for example this value is 500 and we multiply lambda multiply u and plus lambda multiply v and we're gonna have this so if we lambda multiply u, we have this, and then lambda multiply v, we have this, and then if we plus them together, we have this. So that is vector addition, and um, also multiply a vector with a, a value or a constant. And if we want to calculate uh, the length of a vector, or it also called a norm for the vector, so length of a vector or norm of the vector. Uh, we can, for example, the vector use here. So if we want to calculate the length of it, there are so many ways, but it manually, we can calculate it using this way. We can uh, say length of uh, u, and length is going to be numpy dot sqrt, which is root square of um, u first element, and uh, square, then plus, then plus, Oh, sorry, plus second element and square, then plus first element and square, and then we get u length. Oh, something wrong there. Um, index three doesn't work because this is number two. Yeah, so we got that. It's a length of vector u. So that is a normal way that we can calculate the length or the norm of the vector. But actually. We can use a different method to calculate the length or the norm of the vector using NumPy. So in NumPy, we can import uh, from NumPy, import nin near algebra, for example, as LA, run that, okay. Then we can calculate the length of u by called norm function. Then we can have the length of a vector, which is similar to the way that we do manually. So that's this different way to calculate the length or the norm of a vector using manual calculation or using linear algebra module from NumPy package. Next, we're going to look at dot product. So what is dot product? Okay, dot product of two vector is always a number or a scalar. So dot product can be represented by this formula. And dot product can also be used to compute the angle between two vectors by this formula. So let's have a look at a, an example and we're gonna implement it using Python. Okay, so here the example is here. So we're gonna make a, a new shell here. So given we're gonna import numpy first, s and b first. Yeah. Then we have two vector, which is vector a and vector b. So vector a is one two three, vector b is three one one. So to define vector a, we're gonna choose numpy dot array. Then we put in like this one two three, and to define vector b, we're gonna put in array like that and put in 3, 1, 1. So actually A and B are 
row vector. But it, it can, so um, I think it's a bit confusing here. When we type in like this, A and B looks like a row vector. But the operation of this vector actually looks like a column vector. So we need to keep that in mind. Then, okay, so we, so given is A and B, we also given the, um, so what we need to do, calculate the angle phi between two vectors. So how to do that? In order to do that, we can use this formula. So we know that cosine of phi is equal to dot product of two vectors over the norm of vector A multiplied by the norm of vector B. So we're gonna firstly we're gonna need to calculate the norm of vector A. So here the name norm of vector A can be determined using this formula. Then the norm of vector B can be determined using this formula. Okay, then next we're going to need to uh, calculate the, so now we have uh, the dot product and we also have the dot product. We can say dot pro of A and B. So to calculate dot product in Python, we need to use, we need to use a function dot in numpy which is np dot dot and then we just put in A and B here. So now the angle phi in radian is going to be uh, the dot product, dot product AB over the dot scale, so A multiplied by B, where A is the norm of A and B is the norm of B. Just that. Then we have phi in degree is number by uh, degree phi in radian. So then we have phi in degree here. So now this is the result. If we have an input of an array is A and another input of an array is B then we can have the angle between those two vectors is 36.9 or 37 degree which is similar to this value is that correct? maybe I make a mistake there I think I make a mistake there so let's say the dot product here it is not the same as the value we can we have here so let's see what happened okay so this is uh, dot Pro AB. So drop product is A. Okay, that's correct. So the scalar E and scalar B. Scalar E is that and scalar B is that. So if we use a dot product is 8. So if we say 8 over um, that and uh, oh, okay, we forget it. Yeah, so I, I forget it. R10, R cos, R cosine. So, okay, so phi need to be numpy dot. Uh, okay. So because cosine of phi is this formula. Okay. So to calculate phi, I need to use R cosine. So in order to use R cosine, I need to import math. Let's say, do we have numpy R cosine? Do we have it? We don't have a cosine function in numpy. Okay, so we need to import math. So we need to import math here. Then this need to be math dot a cosine of that value. Yeah. Then the then now the phi the angle between two vector are forty nine point eight five, which is exactly this value. Okay, and that is is a way of how to work with dot product, or and specifically this example is how to calculate the angle between two vectors using dot product 
and vector norms. All right, we are back to the mathematics of GIS, and in this part, we're gonna look at cross products. So, what is cross product? Here we have a definition for cross product. So, cross product of two vectors a and b is actually a vector. So, cross product of a and b is c, and vector c looks like this. And because cross product is actually a vector, so it can be represented in a figure like this. So, if we have vector a and vector b, we can determine the cross product of a and b is c. So, vector c is actually perpendicular to vector a and vector b. And we can also determine the length of vector c which is the cross product of vector a and vector b using this formula. So in this formula we can see that the length of cross product c is actually equal to the length of vector a multiplied by the length of vector b then multiplied by sine of the angle between a and b. So let's look at an example and uh, we want to try to implement it in Python. So here we have example 56. So in this example here, 56 here, we have two vectors A and B. So let's say um, given vector A is equal to number dot array vector A is 1, 0, 0 and similar we can define vector B is 1, 1, 0 like that what we need to do is we need to determine the cross product of A and B and determine the length of that cross product vector so for example we have here C is a cross product So cross product can be determined using numpy. So we can go numpy and dot cross function. Then we put in a and b. Just by that way we can have the cross product of a and b. Then the uh, norm of c is actually c norm or c length is equal to numpy uh, dot uh, lin, linear algebra dot norm and we put c inside here then now we can have a b c and the length of c so a is this b is this c is looking like this and the length of c is like this so this is actually the first way first method to determine the length of a cross product vector. Okay. We have second way to determine the length of C using this formula. So to determine the length of C by this method, we need to determine the length of A and the length of B and also the angle between A and B and this uh, get the product of A and B and sign of the angle between A and B. So let's try it here. We say second method to calculate the length of a C. So firstly we need to determine the angle or uh, firstly we need to determine the length of A. So A length is actually just M and norm of A b length is actually just norm of b but the angle we need to find the to, to determine this angle we need to come back to this formula so we need to define the dots product and then divide it by the length of a and b so dot product which is dot of a and b is actually just number dot a and b then the angle angle three which is invariant is actually just uh, num 
we need to import mass as well here import mass we get the mass dot a close of what of something over something something over something so above here is just the uh, dot of a and b and below here is just a length multiplied by b length then we need to convert it into degree of the mutual so now if we look at this formula here we want to determine the length of the cross product we have the length of a and the length of b and the sign of that so now c length is going to be equal to something over something something above here which is uh, a length multiplied by b length and down here we got uh, numpy dot sign of phi radian then we get the c length uh, numpy have no attribute called norm uh, actually yeah so in order to calculate the norm of the vector i forget that we need to use norm inside the neck so it needs to be nin algebra like that and inside here like that we run this again and we have c length is two okay i think something wrong here it needs to be one so let's see what happened here all right so actually the this is not um divided here so this is multiplied here so number is one so we have different ways of calculating the length of a cross product vector which is using the first way is to determine the, determine the vector and then determine the norm of that vector the second way is determine the cross the dot product between your vector and the angle between your vector and then we can also determine the length of that um, cross product vector but uh, what is the actually the length of a cross product vector so the length of, of c is a cross product vector a and b is actually the area of the parallel parallelogram spanned by a and b so that's why we have the value we have, that's why we have two different ways to calculate the length of c and that's it for this section what is cross product and how to calculate the length of the cross product vector next we're gonna look at scalar triple product and the parallel lepipid or the volume of the parallel lepipid which is formed by three point vectors so what is a uh, scalar triple product so if we have three point vector a b c like this a b c like this and if the three vectors do not lie in the same plane they then form a parallel lepipid looks like this okay so if we want to calculate the volume of this parallel lepipid we can use this formula and we can also use this formula and actually if we form a matrix from these three point vectors the volume of the parallel lepipid is actually the depth or the determination of that matrix so let's have a look in Python to see how we can implement it so here is method 1 and we're going to look at the example 57 so in this example we are given vector a is 2 minus 6 and 2 vector b which is 0, 4 minus 2 and vector c is 2 2 minus 4 so how to determine the volume of this shape or the parallel lepipid which 
which is formed by uh, from three vectors. So the method one we want to use, which is using this formula. So this formula is actually a dot product of two ve first vector and then the, uh, the cross product of two first vector and then the dot product of that vector with the last vector. So let's see how it goes. We're going to say here is method 1 and uh, we're going to say that we are given different vector looks like this. A, B, and C. Then we can calculate the dot product of A and B and plus C. So we can do numpy dot dot A and B. Uh, actually, numpy dot cross of A and B. Then we put in our side numpy dot dot. C. So this means we take the cross product of A and B, then we get the, cross, the dots product of the result of this and C. And let's see what we have here. So we have minus 16, and the result here is minus 16. Okay? Another way that we can calculate it, which is we take the we take the cross product of A and B, then we take the dot product of C and A and B. So here is going to be C, and then here is A and B, and you also get minus sixteen. So that is the first method, but we can also use the second method, which is this way. So let's say here this is the second method. In this method, we're going to calculate the volume of the parallel left pipette using this formula. So in order to do that, we need to determine the cross product of A and B. So that means cross product of A and B which is this value and then we need to determine the um, scalar of uh, A and B okay so this is a scalar of A and B okay then we need to determine the scalar of C so here is the scalar of C then we need to determine the angle between A, B and C so this is the angle between A, B, and C, or this is the angle between the cross product of A and B and C. So it can be determined by this way. So firstly, we need to determine the dot product between A and B, A, B, and C. Then we need to determine the norm of A and B. Actually, we have already above. We need to determine the norm of C then we determine the angle between A, B and C so we put the angle in a degree then we get the angle at 109 degrees then finally we can calculate the volume of the parallel pipette and this is the same, this is 16 okay that is the second method but another method that we can use to determine the volume of this parallel lipid which is using the uh, determination of depth of a matrix which is formed by vector A, vector B and vector C so let's uh, give it a try here so if we form a, a matrix from these three vectors this looks like this okay to so get vector a here b here and c here and then the determination or the depth 
at i can be determined using the modal linear algebra from uh, numpy and then you get it and it is minus 16 so that does mean the volume of this parallel pivot is 16 so that's this we can have three different ways to calculate the volume of a parallel lipid which is formed by uh, from three vectors so um, next we're going to look at um, how to define a matrix in Python and um, how to do metric multiplication or product of two matrices so uh, in Python if we want to work with matrix we need to import numpy so this is numpy we need to import numpy okay and um, to define a matrix for example a matrix looks like this here a matrix with two row and two column so um, the first row is 1 2 and the second row is 3 4 and the second matrix is 5 6 7 8 with the same size let's say matrix A we can define by numpy dot array then inside here we put in two square bracket and inside here we have a uh, comma the data for the first row need to be inside this one and uh, the data for the second row need to be inside this one so here we put in one and two and the second row is three and four it looks like that sometimes we can put it like this to see it better so that is the first matrix the second matrix we can copy the first one and we input the second one which is five six seven eight here and then we have a and b are two matrices so if we multiply a by b we are going to have a uh, element wise multiplication so that means uh, the first one will multiply by the second one uh, the, the first element multiplied by the first element in the second matrix so like 1 multiplied by 5 we have 5 here 2 multiplied by 6 we have 12 here 1 multiplied by 7 we have 7 here similar we have uh, 8 here uh, as you have uh, 32 here if you want to do matrix multiplication you need to use numpy dot map mode and we put in two matrices like that so this is matrix multiplication result of uh, matrix A and matrix B okay and we also have another way which is dot product of two matrices it's actually matrix multiplication so we have numpy dot then we put in a and b and we will have the same result so matrix or mat mil is the same as uh, dot product and that is the power to define a matrix in python and do some simple matrix multiplication using python Next is going to be about 2D geometric transformation. Firstly, we're going to look at translation. So, 2D translation. For example, we have a uh, point P here, and we want to translate this point P to P prime. So, how can we do that? So. P prime have 
the coordinate is x prime and y prime. So x prime can be determined by x plus t, where t is this distance along x axis, and y prime is equal to one plus t y, where t y is actually the distance from p to p prime along y axis. So that is for this is normal notation, but we can also do this as a matrix. So um, if we define p as a vector p, then and we define the translation vector is t, which is a vector with two elements t x and t y. Then we have p prime is just p plus t. So we have the formula for 2D translation looks like this. So let's have an example in Python. Okay. So we got a new sample in Python here for example. If we um, let's say we use matrix notation. So firstly we're gonna need to import number. Yep. Then we define x and y. Then we define a vector called P with two elements x and y. Then we define tx and ty. Then we define a translation vector which is t with two elements tx and ty. Then now we just apply the formula p prime is actually p plus t and we run it and we have so p prime is 25, 15 because it's, we just add 20 plus 5 is 25 10 plus 5 is 15 so that is using matrix notation but we can also easily use this formula so because we have x and y is 20 we also have T H and T Y is five and five, and H B is prime. It just equal to X and T X. Y prime is just equal to Y and T X T Y. Then we have the same result: twenty five, twenty five, and twenty five, twenty five. So we can use matrix notation or we can do normal notation to do the translation but matrix notation will be faster if we have uh, more data if we have big data and that's it for 2D geometric transformation translation from P to P prime using translation matrix Okay, so that is the translation, it's called translation vector, but it can be a matrix as well. Next is rotation of 2D coordinates. So, um, if we want to rotate a vector or a one point, a one coordinate point from P to P prime we can use this formula where the rotation angle is phi but it can also be done using a rotation matrix here so let's try in Python with the real data example 
So for example here, firstly we need to import y, s, and b. Then we have the input x, y for example is 20 and 10. Then we can, then we can define a vector called p. For example, the rotation angle is 45 degree. Then we can convert that angle to radians. Next, we need to define rotation matrix. It's actually just 2D rotation matrix. So, a uh, 2D rotation matrix can be defined by this formula, which is uh, cosine of phi, minus sine of phi, sine of phi, and cosine of phi. Then now we can determine B prime or X prime and Y prime using the new rotation matrix. So now we just use the rotation matrix and multiply with the input vector. Then we have B prime. And the result of the vector P after rotate 45 degrees is vector B prime with a value is 7 and 21. And if we see here, if it is 20 and 10 here, if we rotate this angle, we can he have that the x is going to be reduced and y is going to be increased. And it makes sense here. And that is using matrix notation. So now we can check the result of matrix rotation. by using normal notation so or by just using this formula so if we have uh, phi we have x and y then we can easily determine x prime and y prime so okay we have x y we have phi then we can calculate x prime and y prime and this is the result and we see that using normal notation and using matrix rotation we can also have the same result and that is for 2D matrix rotation of 2D Cartesian coordinates next is scaling or scaling using scaling matrix for 2D coordinates so how to do that it's super simple uh, we have a point P here. If you want to scale it to P prime, we're going to use a uh, scale at X or SY in different direction. So X prime can be determined by this formula and Y prime can be determined by this formula. Can be determined by this formula. Uh, but we can also using matrix notation by defining the scaling or scalar uh, as a matrix or as a scaling matrix like this so s is equal to a 2x2 two two matrix for 2d coordinates then we have uh, sx and then 0 and then 0 and sy so uh, let's try with an example in Python here we use matrix notation we import number, then we define S and Y, and then we define the vector P. Then we define the scaling metric, which is S. So now we have a scaling metric looks like this. So now we can determine 
be prime using matrix root uh, multiplication S and uh, the input point then we have the output B prime is 30 by 20 so that is using matrix notation but we can also using normal notation by this formula to check if the matrix notation is working or not so it's very simple we have X and Y here we have a uh, scale in X direction and scale in Y direction then we can calculate output X prime and uh, Y prime in each direction so we can compare with matrix notation we can see that the results are the same and that's it for 2D matrix notation or 2D matrix scaling of 2D Cartesian coordinates using Python next is using homogeneous coordinates so um, there is an easier way to deal with geometric transformation is using homogeneous coordinate based on this book but I'm, I'm not sure it's really easier or not but we just accept that we have a different way to deal with coordinate transformation which is homogeneous coordinates so what is homogeneous coordinates? so this is the definition every point with the Cartesian coordinates xy can be assigned the homogeneous coordinates t, x, t, y and t so conversely given the homogeneous coordinates of point r, s, d we can determine its Cartesian coordinates by this formation so um, in this case we're going to assign this 2D point its homogeneous coordinates is x, y and 1 and then we can uh, represent the geometric transformation using this formula so we have um, we can express the transformation using 3 by 3 matrices so this is for rotation this is for scaling and this is for translation okay and it depends on the order if we want to follow a certain order we can get certain result so for example if we will do translation first and rotation later and then scale later we're gonna get different result with the rotation the scale and translation but I'm gonna talk about this in the next video so in this video I'm gonna be I'm gonna focus on how to do the homogeneous coordinate transformation so as we see from the previous example we have the same example as this one here so um, we are given four point point one point two point three point four and uh, we transform <coughs> to so from from the red here we transform to the green shape which is point uh, one prime one point p prime two three four here so in order to follow this transformation we need to know which is the order so in order to do that we run that and we can see that here it, one here is zero zero and after transform this is 3 and 2 but here we got 1.4 and uh, 3.5 it's not correct why because we chose the order of transformation is not correct so now how can we change the order of transformation so I think the order of uh, scale and rotation doesn't matter but the order of transition is very important so let me um, do a um, so we want to follow and have exactly this result we need to change this to t here and also this is t here t here and t here and we delete this so we see that 0 now become the output of 0 0 is 3 2 the output of uh, 1 0 is this one 4 and 3 nearly 4 and 3 yeah and that the output of 1 1 now is 3 and nearly 4 3 and nearly 4 here so why does this happen so here we're going to choose the rotation first then scaling and then do translation so let's try a matrix we're going to do the um, scale first and rotation later let's see how it works scale first 
and rotation later. So that means we will scale and then we rotate and then we do translation finally. And if we can see that it's pretty much the same. So we save the result here. We got it 3, 2. So now we get back to um, this is SR, 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 SR. We get back to here and we get the result looks like that. So we can see that actually the order is very important and it actually influences the result. So we need to choose the order very carefully. So based on this formula, we can see that the order is a rotation and then a scale and then trans translation. Okay, so we should choose rotation first and scale and then translation last. So we go for rotation, scale and translation and we have this. Okay, we have this. We can copy and paste down here just for comparison. Okay, so this is the result using 2D transformation matrix. So let's try to use different approach which is homogeneous coordinates. So in homogeneous coordinates, we need to define the transformation matrix as 3 by 3 matrices. And here we have the same input this has the same uh, rotation angle, the same uh, scaling factor, and the same transition uh, values. We define the transition matrix looks like this, similar to this formation. We define the scaling matrix looks like this, which is exactly this one. And we define the rotation matrix looks like this. Okay. So now it's very important the order, because we know that the order is here rotation first so we're not we're gonna choose rotation here then scaling we choose scaling and finally is transition then we choose transition and then we run it using homogeneous coordinates approach here and now we can check the result and we can compare let delete uh, some unnecessary thing so now we can compare the result so after run that we have the first point now become this gg4 the second point now become this and this so it seems like something wrong here ah i know what uh, okay so we can see that uh, we found the problem here we just define p1 to do for two three and four and then this need to be two three and four and we let's run this again so you see that after we run that we can see the result using homogeneous coordinates is the same as using 2x2 two two rotation matrix approaches and that is for using homogeneous coordinates transformation approach to transform 2D Cartesian coordinates from the red shape to the green shape alright so we know different transformations already so we know how to do 2D translation, how to do 2D rotation and 2D scaling but now how to combine three transformations and make one transformation from the input vector or coordinate to the output vector or coordinate to do that we just combine all the transformation into one matrix it's called transformation matrix and here is the formula for that so if we have input is vector b we can have b prime is s r b plus t where t is the transition or translation vector r is rotation matrix and s is a scaling matrix and in the detailed notation the translation looks like this uh, but i think this formula have some problem in uh, real application I'm going to show you later in the Python example. Okay, so let's have a look at an example here. We have example city. So what we have? So because uh, we know that uh, we can do normal notation, but in this example we will try to use matrix notation, and uh, the result is here, so we can check the result. Okay, so what we are given? Firstly, we need to import numpy as np. We run that. Then we'll look at the given. Well, we're given uh, 
four different points here, which is uh, P1, P2, P3, P4, which is uh, 00, uh, 10, 11, and uh, 01. So let's say we have four points, looks like that. Okay. And those four points represent this uh, square, this red square. And uh, let's say the um, rotation angle is 50. For uh, 45, so we're gonna have the rotation angle in 45. Then we have the translation in axis two. I oh, know we had translation. Oh, here's the scaling in uh, in in x is two, and the scaling factor in y is one. So we're gonna have that scaling factor. And then we have the um, translation value. So the translation value is uh, the translation vector is three and two. So we have that. Define it here. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so now we can define the matrix T which is a uh, scaling and rotation matrix so we're going to define a matrix called um, scaling and rotation so let's see the formula here so you can see that here in this formula we have two parts one is the translation vector here and we have the scaling here and the rotation here but um, so we already defined the translation vector so now we need to define the scaling and rotation matrix together. And we just put in a formula, it's using this formula, and using NumPy we can create this. So let's see the value of rotation and scaling matrix and the translation vector. So this is scaling and uh, rotation matrix, and this is translation vector. So now how to use this? matrix, rotation matrix, scaling and rotation matrix and translation vector to transform from these four points to these new four points. So from the red square to the new new transform figure in uh, in green color here. So to in order to do that we're gonna do one point by one. So for example we have a P P one that's gonna be uh, we're gonna have numpy. So in order to do that, we're gonna do it in order. The first step we need to do is we need to trans translate it first. We do the uh, translation first. So we have um, P P1 PT1. This is gonna be P1 plus. Um, so let's say PT1 gonna be big. Okay. So you know we're gonna go back to the translation here. So this is the way that we can use the translation. So we just do P1 and T. And then we have PT1. Look like that. Okay. Then we have P, P1, which is the final point of P1. Okay. It's going to be uh, NumPy, Mac, no, and SR, and PT1. Then PP1 will have this value. So let's uh, compare with the value here. So here we have 3 and 2. Ah, oh, it's something not right, isn't it? Okay, so um, I think I don't agree with uh, I don't agree with the result show in this example because the order of the, the example here is probably not not correct if we apply in, in it in a real world uh, example. So if I follow this formula, I can have the result exactly 3 and 2, but I don't think this way is correct. So I prefer to do the translation first, and then I will do the scaling and rotation later. So similar, I can calculate um, for, so I don't need to do this, I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to put this inside here. Yeah. I'll put inside there. So that mean P prime gonna be scaling and rotation matrix 
multiply with P1 but before multiply with P1 we need to translate it with the vector T and then we have that similar I want to do for P2 and P3 and P4 and we have P2 here, P3 and P4 here and similar we can have the result for P4 3 and 2 and result looks like this it may be not correct with the result shown in the book here but I believe this way is the correct way uh, if we want to apply it in the real world application this is just an example in um, in a book and I'm not sure it may be not correct okay that's it uh, um, how we can combine different translation rotation scaling and translation into uh, 2d Cartesian coordinate transformation using Python in this section we're going to look at the influence of the order to the result of coordinate transformation so uh, it, we choose the order is translation first then rotation then scaling we will have different results from scaling then rotation then translation so let's have a look here um, this is for 2d matrix coordinate transformation so for example we look at the sample city the same as previous sections we see that we choose the order is rotation first then scaling then translation follow this order then we have so here we check it is translation rotation first then scaling then translation we have this result and if we look at this result we can see that we have exactly the result in here next if we change the translation order transformation orders which is translation first then rotation then scaling so translation first then rotation then scaling check the result so the result for the point one is two three now but in this case the result for point one is different one four and three five it's different and next let me change the order to translation first then scaling then rotation so translation first scaling and rotation and we run it we see the result now is 2.8 and 5.6 4.1 so from 0 0 to 2.8 and 5.6 and the previous result is from 0 0 to 1.4 to and uh, 3.5 so that is the different of transformation order in 2d coinness system transformation using matrix notation next we're going to look at the influence of transformation order in homogeneous coordinates approach so here in homogeneous coordinate approach if we use rotation first then scaling then translation we will have this result and this result say that from 0 0 we will have 3 2 okay so that is one order but if we change the order to translation first then rotation then scaling we will have different results so we do the translation first that means from 0 0 we do translation to 3 and 2 then we rotate it then from 0 0 the output will be 1.4 and 3.5 which is around around here so it's not here but it will be around here and if we change uh, the order to translation, scaling, and rotation, and translation here, scaling here, and rotation here, and we run, and we see that from zero zero here, 
you will have the output is 2.8 which is around here 2.8 and 5.6 which is around here okay so we see that the translation order provides different different translation or transformation orders provide different results from zero here we provide a result here a result around here and a result around here so just to keep in mind that when we do coordinate transformation it is really important to choose the right order of the translation or transformation that we choose which one first i prefer using the approach that translation will do first and then do the scaling then do the rotation and then do the scaling last in this section we're going to look at the applications of coordinate transformation in GIS. So um, this is an example here. So in this example, we're going to have the data in global coordinate system. And we want to transform to local coordinate system. The data that we're going to choose for this example is in here. It looks like this. So inside this file, we have 71 file, 71 points, and uh, it's in uh, GTA 94, a UTM coordinate system. It's equivalent to the global coordinate system. And if we want to convert this data into a shape file and put inside AutoCAD gonna look like this so this is location of the point and um, this is a CSV file we can import into pandas and then we can show the data using pandas looks like this so we can compare what the data is in pandas on the left here and data from csv file on the right here okay so what we need to do is we need to select a um, a new origin original point of the new local coordinate system like in this figure here we need to find the ok point so we need to select one point represent OK and um, in here after we import pandas we put in the location to the file we read that CSV file in using pd dot the grid CSV after that we import numpy and we convert a pandas column to a numpy array then we show the content of the pandas data frame and we have this result so this is a numpy array of easting data and this is a numpy array of nosting data so uh, we decided to choose the new origin of the local coordinate system is this point so we're going to copy this And we go to auto auto cat here and then we do we draw a full full fully line and we put it in here so let's say this is um so here paste this in here enter okay so let's make it uh, a horizontal line like this first enter this is a new origin. We need to have the new rotation angle as well. So we choose the rotation angle is 50. So it's going to be rotate here. Choose this point and put in 50. Okay. So now we can um, extend it up to here. Okay. So this is going to be a new local x axis. Let's uh, like this, just to make a uh, an error for the coordinate system. Okay, and we're gonna copy this and do an array. This is 
gonna be a polar. This is the center. Oh no. Need to do an array. This is the object. Gonna do a polar. Um, we're gonna choose the axis of rotation. So we're gonna choose 50. So we just type in 50 here. A bit weird. So we just copy this, this here. And we rotate it. Make it easier. And we type in 90. So we have a new coordinate system here. Okay. So we know it's this angle, which is a rotation angle. It's 50. 50. Yeah. So let's um, make the dimension bigger. For example, 10. Yeah. So now make a capture and we can put it in our Jupyter notebook. So to make it in here, to have a figure in here. And also can put in here as a, as a figure if we want to. Yeah. So basically now we have um, E, A, E and R is uh, east synchronous and north synchronous of um, 70 points in global in the global coordinate systems and we want to change to transform them to local coordinate system we know the new origin is this we know the rotation angle is this okay so um, the first thing we need to do is we need to do a translation so translation is T so because we have the new origin so that means the translation is going to be the coordinate of new origin that's why we can define the translation vector t then we have the new pt so if we get the first point in the data frame is this point then after translated we will, we will have the new coordinate of this first point is 0 0.0 299 and 3.4328 if we check in the new point system let's see the point so this is the first point we're gonna look for that point okay so the first point is this point so this is the first point and this first point if we draw like this and we draw like this And we need to check the first point if it is the, the point that we are looking for let's uh, check this again not the point here we place this in here and we put it here okay so exactly that point So after we translate, that means the this point now we'll have this coordinate. So in y direction, it 3.4329, which is this one, and the x direction is very small here. So if we measure the distance, the distance uh, between here and here. You see that the distance is 0 0.0299 which is this one so that is after translation we have that new coordinate value but we also need to do the rotation as well so to, to do the rotation we need to define the rotation matrix because the rotation angle is minus 50 so we can define the phi degree is minus 50 then we convert it into phi radians and then we can define the rotation matrix look like this and then we can apply that to the input point after the after the uh, translation so this is after the translation we have that and after rotation we will have the new point looks like this so this is the coordinate after rotation and then if we go to here we delete this, delete this, delete this. So after rotation and translation, 
to have new coordinate of this point in the new coordinate system which is uh, 2.1 and 2.6 and here we got 2.1 and 2.6 okay uh, 2.1 is in x direction 2.6 in y direction 2.6 in 2.1 yeah 2.6 in 2.1 it's correct then the final thing is we need to do the scaling but in this case the scaling is 1 so the result is still 2.6 and 2.1 so that means that we have we test for one point and we use a metric transformation and then we have the result correct with the figure that we check here now we need to combine them all using matrix notation so to combine them all we're going to put this in here we put in in, in here is a uh, rotation matrix and then the scaling matrix and we put in the uh, so P is the input and PS is the final and then we have that result similar here we are gonna make it uh, shorter and more concise so here P is input then do translation first here we do translation first and then we do rotation yes and here we do rotation and finally we do scaling and then we have the result and the result is exactly 2.6 and 2.1 here 2.6 and 2.1 so that is for one point but now we need to apply the transformation for all 71 points how can we do that so in order to do that firstly we're going to need to uh, import it as uh, we import the data of this CSV into a data frame here then we convert uh, the easting and nothing column into two numpy array which is E and E and N here and then we define a transform local 2D function with the input is the in X in Y and uh, translation the, the rotation angle and the scaling factor then we define the input value point then we define the translation vector the rotation angle the rotation matrix the scaling matrix then we get the output with this output, the order of the translation is translation first, then rotation, and finally scaling. And then we got the output, and we return the output. So in order to do transformation for 71 point, we just loop to the numpy array, and add data, and compute the transformation, and then add data to a new numpy array. So here we define the input as this as the first value we test this then we test this and then we get this after we test it we find it's okay then we just uh, loop to the value in this array and then we print it out so after we do that we can see that we have a new result which is a uh, new data frame with two new columns which is e local and uh, n local which is a value of the same point but in local system after coordinate transformation and here we can use pandas to filter to make two different data frame in uh, rdk and ppk and then we have the result here so that's it and after we do that we can uh, after we have the data frame we can actually save the data frame out a csv file if we want to so for example here if we have that we're gonna try that which is um, not to CSV and then we define the output output file to say output file is uh, let's say that we want to make the output file here called um, pile location output which is RTK and make it a CSV here and then our good is is ppk so let me is okay we copy the path and we push this in here okay then we put here is output rdk and paste in here we run it after we run it we open this file there's nothing in there uh, something wrong with it local 
Okay, so let's see what happens. Ah, oh, okay, here. I forget to put it in here. And then you can put in the index as a post. So, something wrong there. Okay, let's ignore it. Something wrong, because it's open. Okay, do this again. Okay, here the path is not correct. Let's correct the path. Okay, so it's done. So a local RTK is already decided to output file RTK. I want to open that. You will see that. There's a problem with this will have an index from the beginning here. So to fix this, I'm going to make index is false. Then check the update of this. Now we have that. If we open using Excel, it will look like this in this cell. Okay, similar in inside pandas here. Similar, we can do for PPK data. PPK data. Then make it uh, PPK. And the file should be PPK. So before running, we check the file. Nothing in the file. So now we can run it. And we check the file. Update it. We got it. And if we open by Excel, we, we, we should got it here. Okay. And if we check it with the data frame, exactly what we have. Uh, pi number, e local, not local, the position, type, survey, and uh, motor beam name. So that is an uh, example of how we can implement coordinate transformation using um, matrices, rotation matrices, translation matrices, scaling matrices for a set of data point. What I'm going to try to do now is adding locations of the pi center into this plot. In this plot now, I have raw sounding locations from seven surveys for PPK and RDK data. But I want to have a figure, something look like this. So I need to plot a circle which represents the center location of the pile with the same color as the raw sounding. So I need to plot one in total seven circles in each plot. So how can I do that? So let's have a look at the function that I use to plot these plots. This is a function. So this is a function with many many input parameters or input arguments. Basically, I'm going to use index to survey name to get the survey name based on index. So I know the order of the data in the folder that I store data, which is here. That why with this order, I know that uh, for the first one is gonna be pile one. Then it's gonna be 2014 October, and the equipment is 2024. Similar, the last one is 2020 April. The equipment is 2020. So based on that and the function, which have me index to survey name which is actually this index to survey name function so actually index to survey name here is actually not a function it's actually just just getting information from data so firstly i need to have the raw file list then look through the raw file list to get the index for each index i'm going to get the uh, information from the file and I try to make it like this so basically this is a file name for example this is a file name here we get file name like this if I'm going to put it here so that's 7 to 13 of this file name which being this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so not including 13 basically from 7 to 12 so I get this first part of the name which is the date then I put RDK or PPK in so here I only put PPK um, which is very weird I also have RDK as well oh yeah depends on the data okay so I have um, function to plot on the right so you can see that <clears throat> I need to make more comments. So for the function, for this function, plot raw sounding. And I put RDK here because, because I put RDK there is because RDK is plotting on the left and PPK is plotting on the right. So 
Hardy case is actually plotting on the left. Plot raw settings, purpose, plot location, sub raw settings for RDK data, RDK data with, with the uh, coordinate tick map uh, on the left. So that's why we have RDK here. So basically you can see that if I put the name in again here and uh, put a bit a little bit and if it's RDK here and then the page name which is the file name and then from minus 4 to minus 8 so this is minus 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 half uh, is that so funny okay this means it has something like this well place where there and then this is minus one minus two minus three minus four so from minus five minus six minus seven minus four minus eight to minus four not including four so i have um the surveying date the type of data the multi beam system name so after that i can get the survey to index name so after that i have a dictionary with uh, survey and index name so if I have the raw data found list, do I have it here? Yeah, I have the raw data found list, which is, um, so in this list we have um, the pi number 5, pi number 5. So that, that means we have here raw file list, which is file number 5. And then with this list, we have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 data files in this list. Send so for every single one in that list. If we run this, we can have a uh, dictionary which is indexed to survey name. So we know that we can get the survey name based on index, which is very useful way to get information and for for plotting. Next thing here we got uh, we've got so we create a figure. You can see that we get the figure and uh, we turn on the grid of the figure. Then we we set the major format. Yes, so we set the major format. So we don't need to set the axis. Uh, we don't set that to the label. So if we set it, we'll have uh, each thing and no thing here. But we don't need to do that because it's understandable. But if you want, we can do it. We can do it to make this thing here and no thing here to make it tough. But it's a map, so we don't need to do it. Everyone will understand this is each thing and this is no. Then we can set the title. Okay, so the title is not defined yet. Okay, that's the title. So we can set the title. And if we do show it. We should have something there, but we can't see it now, so no problem on that. So we define a legend, which is a list. Then um, for every single file in the raw file list, we're gonna get the header names. Header names is this thing, low thing, and the depth, fermenter, low, water, mean sea level. So we define a uh, header name for the data frame. When with this header name, we also have the in data. So the in data which is um, we just read the data in with the file which is xyz data file and um, the name is using header name and the limiter is actually space so after that we have a data frame looks like this with uh, this thing nothing and the depth so we're gonna assign x is the value of um, this column then we have x and y is the value of this column then we have y we have x looks like this which is a um, numpy array we have y looks like this which is a numpy array then now we can start plotting so um, we have x and y we just plot x and y data and we can plot x and y data the problem is index is not defined so we're gonna make it like this and then we show the plot so something happened here but it's not working so we're gonna do it again we're gonna make it uh, from here to here so we can see the plot so we have the figure we can actually i don't know why here we have uh, ax3 but actually it can be AH, ax only but i chose to change it for ax3 so it's a bit uh, it's a bit um, confusing yeah i think so it's gonna be confusing i can change it to make it uh, a bit better i copy and control r and then i change to ax and then you know change all so and then ax is not defined yeah, so I need to define AA up here, which is here. And always good. Can I have B here, but it's not necessary to have B here, actually. Doesn't matter. The same is here, though. We can change it to AA. And B here can be put away. And here is AA. And here is AA. And the P can be deleted. Another thing is the circle as well. So we don't need to do that. 
and then you can put it here. But we don't need to do that as well. And something else here as well, you can change it to AX, and P is not necessary. So coming back to this function, which is um, port sounding, we already done it up to this location. But we did not um, do the legend, so we need to do this again with legend, which is here. Create a new figures and add legend scene. So you can see that the legends is actually using the name form there. So how it how it's working? Firstly, for every single for every single file in the raw file list, we're gonna have a survey name, and then we put the survey name in the legend, and we have a list like this. And then we put this list inside legend. Okay. We may change it to be legend list, but not necessarily. It's actually this is confusing with the name of the legend function. That's not a good practice. We should change it to. Uh, yep. We should change it to legend. Okay. So we we gonna this is gonna be. This can be legend list. Okay. Legend list. We're gonna put the uh, the mouse here and start the uh, file. That file. Okay, whenever we find it, we, we reply just that legend dot when I say that uh, replies, that not, that's going to be skip, and it will be legend log, okay, which is legend log, legend log is different, legend, legend log is something, something different, which is just the a text file, define the location of the legend, and um, legend title is no problem, okay, legend size, yeah, all good. So next is legend dot legend title font font size, and we can set it. So the legend here is actually function legend. So we should separate uh, between the legend list and the legend function. So that's a good thing to do. And then, so the next one here also legend. That's the legend file. All good. Yeah. We can come back to that. That one need to be changed. Okay. That one skip. That one need to be changed as well. That one, the function, and skip it, need to be changed as well. And skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it. Um, where we are here, we can skip it. Okay, back there. Next, that one need to be changed as well. Do that, skip it, skip it, skip it, do that. Skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it. So we can continue. Next, that one is not important. That one need to replace it. It's a list and a list. Uh, skip as a function. This is a list. Then just yeah, skip it. Skip it. Skip it. Skip it. Skip it. Skip it. What else I have here? There's a function. A list. Yeah, it come back there. It's just a list. So good. You can see that all good. Okay, here we go. The legend here need to be changed in selection. So, all good. All good. So we have legend list, or legend text. You can change it to legend text. Yeah, we can change it in reply show. Uh, we can have something called legend text. And it is separate to form legend function. So we done to this this location, which is very nice. Yeah, do it. So we have that the function on the right does that. It's not actually as the best because the raw fighting the raw setting. So we need to check it. Uh, what is the raw setting place here? Which is actually um, as bad. So it should be just something like this. We didn't see the legend. We need to plot the legend as well. So make it again here. Okay, so the circle need to be basically have this. Okay, the legion. So the thing is that so we need to plot the circle. And plotting circle is is not simple. Okay, so that's the first step that we already did it as a function looks like this. And um, and that's what we want. Function looks like that. And that's what we want. 
the course we can make it uh, look like this if we want to we can change it and make it look like this so it will look better look better as we expected yeah so this is the first step we can plot it the next step is we need to put the we need to plot the location of the pie center it looks like this and it need to have the same color with the color of each survey so we're gonna show it step by step so the first one we already plotted we already know how to put the legends using legend text the next step we're gonna look at how to put the marker and the color of the marker separately for each survey and it, it needs to be consistent between RDK data and PPK data what I'm gonna try to do now is adding locations of the pi center into this plot in this plot now i have raw sounding location from seven surveys for ppk and rdk data but i want to have a figure something look like this so i need to plot a circle which represent the center location of the pile with the same color as the raw sounding so i need to plot one in total seven circles in each plot so how can i do that so let's have a look at the function that I used to plot these plots. This is a function. So this is a function with many many input parameters or input arguments. Basically, I'm going to use index to survey name to get the survey name based on index. So I know the order of the data in the folder that I stored it, which is here. That's why with this order, I know that uh, for the first one, it's going to be pile 1. Then it's going to be 2014 October and the equipment is 2024. Similar, the last one is 2020 April. The equipment is 2020. So based on that and the function which have me index to survey name, which is actually this index to survey name function. So actually, index to survey name here is actually not a function. It's actually just, just getting information from data. So firstly, I need to have the raw file list. Then look through the raw file list to get the index for each index. I'm going to get the uh, information from the file and I try to make it like this. So basically, this is a file name, for example. This is a file name. If we get file name like this, it, I'm going to put it here. So that's 7 to 13 of this file name, which means this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So not including 13. Basically from 7 to 12. So I get this first part of the name, which is the date. Then I put RDK or PPK in. So here I only put PPK, um, which is very weird. I also have RDK as well. Oh yeah, depends on the data. Okay, so I have... Um, function to plot on the right so we can see that <coughs> I need to make more comments so for the function for this function plot raw sounding and <coughs> I put RDK here because because I put RDK there is because RDK is plotting on the left and PPK is plotting on the right so RDK is actually plotting on the left plot raw sounding purpose Plot locations of raw selling for RDK data, RDK data with, with the uh, coordinate tick mark uh, on the left. So that's why we have RDK here. So basically, you can see that if I put the name in again here and uh, we can a bit and it is RDK here and then the base name, which is the file name, and then from minus 4 to minus 8. So this is minus 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Uh, is that so funny? Okay, this means it has something like this. Well, this way there. And then this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So from minus 5, minus 8, minus 7, minus 4, minus 8 to minus 4, not including 4. So I have um, the surveying date, the type of data, the multi beam system name. So after that, I can get the survey to index name. So after that, I have additionally with uh, survey and index name. So if I have the raw data found at least, do I have it here? Yeah, I have the raw data file list, which is, um, so in this list we have, um, the pile number 5, pile number 5. So, let that mean, 
we had the uh, spell of violation which is 5 number 5 and then with this list we have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 radar files in this list send 4 out every single one in that list if we run this we can have a uh, dictionary which is indexed to survey name so we know that we can get the survey name based on index which is a very useful way to get information and for, for plotting Next thing here we got, uh, we've got, so we create a figure. You can see that we create the figure and uh, we turn on the grid of the figure. And then we, we set the major format, jets, we set the major format. So we don't need to set the axis, uh, we don't set that to the label. So we set it to have uh, this thing and nose thing here, but we don't need to do that because it's understandable. But if you want, we can do it. We can do it to make this thing here and nose thing here to make it uh, But it's a map, so we don't need to do it. Everyone understand this is his thing and this is not. Then we can set the title. Okay, so the title is not defined yet. Okay, that's the title. Uh, we can set the title. If we do show it, we should have something there, but we can't see it now. So no problem on that. So we define a legend, which is the list. Then um, for every single files in the raw file list, we're gonna get the header names. Header names is this thing, low thing, and the depth, parameter, low, water, mean sea level. So we define a uh, header name for the data frame. When we just have the name, we also have the in data. So the in data, which is, um, we just read the data in with the file, which is XYZ data file. And um, the name is using header name. And the limiter is actually space. So after that, we have a data frame looks like this with uh, this thing, no thing, and the depth. So we're going to assign X is the value of um, this column. Then we have x and y is the value of this column. Then we have y. So we have x looks like this, which is a um, numpy array. We have y looks like this, which is a numpy array. And now we can start plotting. So um, we have x and y. We just plot x and y data. Then we can plot x and y data. So the problem is index is not defined. So we're going to make it like this. And then we show the plot. So something happened here, but it's not working. So we're going to do this again. We're going to make it uh, from here to now, so we can see the plot. So we have a figure. We can actually I don't know why here we have uh, AH3, but actually it can be AH, AH only. But I chose to change it for AH3. So it's a bit, uh, it's a bit um, confusing. Yeah, I think so. It's really confusing. I can change it to make it uh, a bit better. I copy and Control R, and then I change to AH, and then you know change all. So and then AH is not defined. Yeah, so I need to define AH yeah, up here, which is here. and all is good. Can I have B here, but it's not necessary to have B here, actually, it doesn't matter. The same is here, we can change it to AH, and B here can be put away, and here is AH, and here is AH, and the P can be deleted. Another thing is the circle as well, I don't need to do that, and then we can put it here, but we don't need to do that as well. And something else here as well, we can change it to AX, and B is not necessary. So coming back to this function, which is um, port sounding, we already done it up to this location, but we did not um, do the legend. So we need to do this again with legend, which is here. Create a new figures and add legends in. So you can see that the legend is actually using the name form there. So how it how it's working? Firstly, for every single for every single file in the raw file list, we're gonna have a survey name and then we put the survey name in the legend and we have a list like this and then we put this list inside legend okay we may change it to be like a list but not necessary it's actually this is confusing with the name of the legend function that's not a good eye practice we should change it to uh, yeah, we should change it to legend okay so we, we gonna, this is gonna be it's going to be legend list. Okay. Legend list. We're going to put the, the mouse here and start uh, five. Uh, five. Okay. Whenever we find it, we, we reply this. That legend dot pen. When I say that uh, replies, that not, that's going to be skip and it will be legend log. Okay. Which is legend log. Legend log is different. Legend, legend log is something, something different. Which is just the a text file. Define the location of the legend and um, legend title is no problem. Okay, legend size, yeah, all good. So next is legend, not legend title, font size. 
and we can set it. So uh, the legend here is actually function legend. So we should separate uh, between the legend list and the legend function. So that's the good thing to do. And, um, so the next one here, also legend. That's the legend the final. All good. Okay. Come back to that. That one needs to be changed. Okay, I'm going to skip. That one needs to be changed as well. That one, the function, and skip it. Need to be changed as well. And skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it. Um, where we are? Yeah, okay, skip it. Okay, back there. Next, that one needs to be changed as well. Do that. Skip it, skip it, skip it. Do that. Skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it. So we can continue. Next, that one is not important. That one need to replace it. It's the list and the list. Uh, skip as a function. This is the list. Then just yeah, skip it. Skip it. Skip it. Skip it. Skip it. Skip it. What else I have here? There's a function. The list. Yeah. We come back there. But it's just a list. So good. You can see that all good. Okay. Here we go. The legend here needs to be changed in selection. So all good. So we have legend list, or legend text, we can change it to legend text. Yeah, we can change it in the special. Uh, we can have something called legend text. And it is separate to form legend function. So we done to this, this location, which is pretty nice. Yeah, no. So we have that function on the right, does that. It's not actually as the best, because we're all fighting, we're all selling. So we need to check it, uh, what is the raw selling place here, which is actually um, as bad. So it should be just something like this. We didn't see the legend. We need to plot the legend as well. So make it again here. Okay, so the circle needs to be basically have this, okay, the legend. So the thing is that, so we need to plot the circle. And plotting circle is, is not simple. Okay, so that's the first step that we already did it. As the function looks like this. And um, and that's what we want. Function looks like that. And that's what we want. Of course, we can make it uh, look like this. If we want to, we can change it and make it look like this. So it will look better, look better as we expected. Yeah. So this is the first step. We can plot it. The next step is we need to put the we need to plot the location of the pie center. Looks like this. And it need to have the same color with the color of each survey. So we're gonna show it step by step. So the first one we already plotted, we already know how to put the legends using legend text. The next step we're gonna look at how to put the marker and the color of the marker separately for each survey and then it needs to be consistent between RDK data and PPK data okay so now we're going to look at uh, how to format the plot how to set up the color the point style and uh, the grid tick mark and other decoration of the plot so let's have a look at the function this is um, the plot raw sounding power center right function okay so for example if we have a look on this we create a figure and then we do this we're gonna have something like this but it doesn't look very nice and it, if we come to this it's gonna look nicer okay so let's give it a try to see how it works first in order to do that to make it simple we're gonna copy it to other file here yeah. so in this file we're gonna do that so if we run it, we're going to get this. So what we're going to have here is he firstly is creating a, a plot with a subplot and a size. We know the size as well. Here yeah, is 7 by 7. Then we turn on the grid. And then we uh, choose the tick mark. It's on the right or on the left. But here we choose it's on the right. So axis, uh, Y axis takes this on the right. And then we format the, um, this is for formatting, format the display of this one. So this is for formatting the number of display for here. So here we choose uh, zero number after the uh, decimal point. 
Why if we do this? I oh, know it doesn't doesn't affect anything, so I'm not sure how it works. Uh, forget it. And we set the title this book. It, um, and you also create the uh, legend text. So we know that the legend tag is this one. So basically up to here we have a figure that looks like this. Then we're gonna plot the so we're gonna choose that, then choose that, then choose the legend. We're gonna choose that and then we're gonna choose the okay, I'm gonna choose that, then we're gonna choose the legend. Okay. Um so I'm gonna put it the um, show here, put it here run it from the beginning but well, I have something like that so if I just I just spot I just want to plot all the points it's very simple well probably I don't need that if I want to have a look like if I want the legend as well I can do that which legend but if I don't want the legend I just put here and plot it so with that it's out of the legend and I also the, have the, the um, coordinate grids as well. So in here I have uh, several things, which is uh, index to size dictionary. So what is index to size? So the size of uh, each point here is defined by index to size. So it depends on the, on the types of survey. We're going to choose the size for each one is different. For example, the first one is 40, then 40. And but the third one we select the twenty. So let's see why it is twenty here. So the third one which is um a third, the third one which is red is twenty because the red color is, is kind of uh, very different from the other color and it's uh, if it if we make it and we select it as forty it can make the point bigger. So we decide to choose twenty. The similar one, the next is forty, then forty and forty. But this one we choose thirty. Because if we make this uh, 40, it will cover all other points. So for this color plot, we see all different surveys for the fit pile. So it's a, that's a good plot. So just to display the size of the point, so we use this as a dictionary. So for every single index, we're going to have one value. And then we just get the value, the corresponding value using a dictionary. This is the index to color. So how can we plot each survey, the, the, the XYZ point for each survey with one color? So we use this dictionary. So for each index, we're going to have one color. And this one is defined by a function. And this function we define in here. We define in here a couple of functions which include uh, index to color. Next is index to transparency. So the transparency is also very important. Here we have the transparency for all surveys are uh, one except the seventh survey. Why? Because disease, the Z7 survey, uh, there are so many selling points and it makes the selling hard to see from, from and it uh, cover all other sellings. So we decided to make it transparency of 0.6. So we can still see the um, cyan color here but we can still see other sounding point or xyz point from other surveys as well and then we choose the edge this is just a normal setting for scatter plot and then the marker so index to marker so the marker is defined by index to marker so for each index we're going to have one time set marker so the first one is o equivalent to circle uh, second is v equivalent to the um, downwards triangle the next is uh, s this is equivalent to square yeah and uh, the next is p equivalent to uh, which is uh, polygon and the next is H, which is equivalent to hexagon. And, and another P here. We have two P here. Okay. So we have two uh, pentagon here. And a seven hexagon. And then the final one here is D, which is this shape, which is uh, diamond here. So that is uh, index to marker. So if we just select, for example, we plot this. And if we don't use it, we're going to change something like this. And um, let's change the size is just size is just uh, 40 for O and then the index to color it just uh, we just choose B for O and then we choose alpha it just 1 for O and we choose H color and marker 
we're gonna choose uh, for example uh, let's say circle for all circle for all and then that's it oh man my mistake but we should choose change this to circle for all so now we can run it and then let's see how it works so we're gonna have something like that um we're gonna now we're gonna, we're gonna make this transparent and we're gonna do it again here oh it doesn't work actually marker is gonna be out and that's it then let's see how it works so we want to see that the color is blue um alpha is one so if we plot something like this you don't know which survey is or which point are represented for this survey and which point are represented for this survey so we need a plot that looks like this so that's why we we need to format it if we don't format it the color will look something like this so we can see, cannot see it so that's how we can change from this to this so if we keep uh, something like this we can have our plot looks like this and if we change this then we have a plot looks like this and that's it for the uh, decoration of color and stuff next we're going to look at the decoration of um, the tick mark as well so this is a major tick mark we're going to define um, major tick mark for every 20 and minor tick mark for every 5 for example so here is the tick mark mean major and a step and this so the major step which is uh, here actually the major step is 1 and the minor step here is 0 0.1 so if we do that and then we put the power show down there so we turn on the minor and let's see what we have turn on the license as well we're gonna have something like this so that is um, so the ticks here is turned on but the grid for the minor grid minor ticks is it's not turned on yet so we also need to turn on the grid for the minor text yeah so but this is only for major grid not yet um, minor so we also need to do something else which is making the the uh, alpha or the transparency of the grid of um, major and minor a little bit different so for the major it's going to be 0 0.95 minor is going to be 0 0.7 so let's try it and see what we have here so we got the major there and the minor there but it doesn't look very nice okay doesn't look very nice then we want to do something else we want to put the, uh, the aspect as well so we want to put the aspect is equal uh, so the scale of uh, horizontal scale and vertical scale is the same so let's uh, try and put that and then we have the scale exactly the same but one more thing we can have a look at which is um, here we have the direction of the tick you can change it in or out and uh, tick here if we make it yeah, if it look like that, we can put it in and make it inward. So, um, and also the color, which is black, but we can put it as uh, blue if we want to. And the alpha as well, with color is black. So this is the um, parameter for with alpha is major. And this is for ticks. And if we do like that, and we put the shell down there. And we make a whole figure there. We're going to have a tick and the color that we set for that. We, we choose to have um, blue here, but probably not very nice to have it blue, so just go for black. And <coughs> now we can set it. So it's all black now. But we can see that here, this would be, this is horizon. This takes the direction is horizon, horizontal. Uh, we want something like it. It's very cool for, uh, for nothing and uh, horizontal for easting how to do that uh, we're gonna choose the rotation here so we define the H tick rotation is 0 and Y tick rotation is 90 and then after we have that we're gonna we can also de uh, set the thickness of this uh, tick mark here yeah, we set 1.5 and it looks pretty okay so it, and we also can set the front side of the tick, set, tick text here and the rotation of the tick text so for demo here the front side is 8 and the rotation is here is 0 and here is 90 and if we see the last plot looks like this not very nice but if we plot the whole thing here when we choose the rotation tick for x and y are different then we have something like this so this is a plot this is a high quality plot that we can put on uh, publication or report or thesis etc 
So that's it. We finished decoration of the uh, plotting of raw XYZ data from CSV data file or XYZ data file and decorate it by uh, color, by um, point style and also plot a uh, coordinate grid with the uh, correct coordinate format and it looks like a map here. We probably can plot something by not arrow here. Probably it's a good thing to plot something by not arrow here. Just uh, some kind of um, symbol or something like that. But, but if not, we can do it in wood. But it's, it's better if we can plot it. So that's it for decorating a vector map using map plot lead. Okay, so I'm um, coming back to that. So now we have plot loop and this. And actually plot. So here we have the raw sounding loop story. Now we need to add circle into plot. How to do that? Add circle plot, same color raw sound, and also put sensor this region. And I also need to put a legend here. So to make it to note that this is high estimate location. So that's it. So this is what we want to do it in high. So then when we plot it for global terms like we, if we need to change plot to local co coordinate, this is global also local. Go from C to some point. Okay, so mm, okay, this four check and balance to find and this should be two chance to hit we lift so which are we find a zero point one here, but we can so think check and let's create this. Yeah, this is two. Okay, so let's prove that the first thing in the process making importing the end only. So this is to read the raw sounding and the look like mm -hmm. yeah. This is the location raw. This is one added pp by three. Same from five to five one four seven. But now we location size seven. This all use shall we can get or what block the same file that get optimized with a new file here. And then I just want to add it. So you know it's the thing field is select all the gear form is high and this will lead us for the good eye and for our location and check basically up with I guess yeah you can reach it how this guy you can go you can see this alley with the case there's no way to check on the gear and go and get more got alley case 1 3 6 7 5 we already have lead made but how to go it looks pretty nice alright so in this section we are gonna look at how to do this from this plot to this plot. So in this plot, we only have raw location of the piles. In this plot, we also we're gonna add in a circle and a plus sign like this. They are indicating the location of the pile, the center location of the pile. So how can we do that? We get into spider here. Inside spider, we have a function here that can help us to plot. So inside here we have two parts. Part one is plotting the raw data, and uh, part two is plotting the center of the pile. If we turn this off and we plot the data, let's see how it works. So you can see here we only have the raw location of the pile, the legend, the color representing different survey, the coordinate grid, the east thing and nothing. Uh, the east thing, nothing, we can fix a little bit to make it better. For example, like this. And this one as well. Then we close it, save it, save it, and uh, start this again. So now we have uh, this thing and nothing and the location of the raw soundings and each survey represented by one color. But now we want to add the tile center which is indicated by a circle and one plus sign here. So how can we do that? We just turn on this part of the code and save it and come back to here and we to restart the console again. And we start it now again. You can see that we have the location of the path. So that is how we can simply add location from this plot, which is using a circle plot and a plus sign plot. So let's have a look into the detail of the function, what we have here inside the function. So um, inside the function here, we're gonna have uh, raw input center file list, which is this file. So in charge this file which is xyz file and each file we have one location of the center so we need to plot the center and we need to plot the plus sign which is indicating the center of the circle to plot the circle we use this plt circle and then we add circle 
and the circle can be defined by the center of the circle and also can be defined by the radius of the circle because we know that the power radius is 0.3015 so we can put in the radius somewhere somewhere in the function or outside we put the radius here that is the radius yeah actually the radius should be 0.5 like that we get the radius then we can plot the circle but one more thing we need to plot it we need to plot the center of the circle the center of the circle is normally just plotting just can be plot by scatter plot and um, for the sign the mark sign of the point we just use the marker as a plus sign so that's pretty easy to add in a circle and to add in a plus sign which indicates the location of the center of the circle now we can see that the location of the grid tick mark is on the right here and it's at the bottom here so how can we change it to the left so let's have a look at how we can do that so here in this function we're going to make it as uh, right and if we want to plot it on the right here we just need to change the y-axis ticks right here so and also need to be um, portion v maybe this need to be uh, jpk instead of portion b and then you make a function another function down there which go left and we change it to left we change the uh, y axis tick to left and um, and also we change this to RDK so it means RDK will be plotted on the left and uh, PPK will be plotted on the right so let's close this console clear everything and give it a try again here so in here we have data for uh, case 5.2 now let's make it another case above here which is 5.1 so let's see for the case 5.1 we have uh, which is uh, post mv this is post mv post mv or survey uh, 5.5 post mv or survey and in here we gonna change to by five which is by five no aspect by five no aspect and here we're gonna change to by five center no aspect and the function here is gonna be left okay we didn't import the function so we get from the beginning here we need to do form by share import that function form by share import that function and um, this is the case if I do we gonna use the right function here okay and if we're happy with that, uh, by 5, by 5, by 5, by 5, this is no aspect here, this is just, just aspect here. And this needs to be RDK, uh, which is uh, post and V, post and V, and we hit the run. Okay, now we cannot import this because there's no function I like in pi share here so we skip it come back and we run this again okay so what we have here we have two plots one is rdk portion v with rdk 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 and the tick mark is on the left here and the other one here which is ppk 
which the legends is pipk 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 and the tick mark is on the right here and that is how can we change the tick mark from the left to the right